All right, man, peace. It's Bronze right here with another video. So um, I've been seeing the recent news that's been going on with controversy, survival, you know, around uh, Passport Bros, especially the ringleader, you know, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, overtly or not, you know, a lot of people uphold someone like Austin Holloman to be the Passport Bros leader. You know, he's young, 23 years old. You know, it's been going to Brazil, now in Thailand and all these different things. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot of different conversations that come out of it. You know, early on when I did my videos about Passport Bros, I had seen this one brother that went hard in my comment section going back and forth, back and forth. You know, and I just was like, all right, brother, I'll see you on a live stream at a different date. But um, I decided to make this video for myself. I, I wanted to review this clip that's from Fox 26 Houston. And, you know, I, I wanted to give my opinion on what I thought about it. You know, you're gonna, there's going to feature two so-called black women beside the so-called black man who's the host. And he's going to give his conversation about passport bros, about sex tourism and all this other stuff. And I mean, if people was paying attention, I would say, I think it's pretty new that the concept of so-called black men traveling overseas. I think it's a new concept. Because usually when it comes to talking about traveling, Black men was mainly talking about their stay in America and the things that they was going to. But now that you have so-called black men who say, hey, I want to get my passport. I want to be able to travel around the world and have a good time. You know, it's met with oppositions because the so-called black woman still wants to be able to have the belt around the so-called black man's neck. And therefore, the guard dogs of that so-called black woman will be the fluid so-called black man or the pro blackity black. So you'll get those concepts out the table. And, you know, you'll have so many people who have so much things to say about quote unquote passport bros. Now, I've already told people what is my pros and cons and what do I think about passport bros? I have no problem with so-called black men in particular traveling the world and wanting to see different places. Of course, I say my thing is I, I just advise the brothers don't travel with ignorance. Obviously, look up the place that you're going, understand the culture much of those things blase blase blah but of course dudes that commented in my comment section have said yeah we know all that already we do that so you know i'll let them have it so we're going to check out this video so pete Back to the factor uncensored. Is sex in your travel itinerary? It's one of the travel goals for a community called the Passport Bros, meaning brothers. It's a traveling community of upwardly mobile black men. Some are accused of going around the world searching for a more traditional and submissive wife. But is it all about sex and just a girlfriend for hire and then return home to humiliate black women in America? That's the passport bros passport bros and you know <laughs> i mean i i've said i said this time and time again i've warned brothers on panels man i said yo once y'all go to a different country y'all cool secluded back out there what do you look like being online trying to argue with an american so-called black woman about how it's so much better and those women are submissive more than she is you know what i'm saying that creates the, the whole entire atmosphere for opposition, where they come out with all this nonsense uh, against the claims of you men and say all the nonsense. And, and believe me, I'm on y'all team. I believe y'all should travel. But I said before, the problem is, is that when y'all go up and y'all start trying to ridicule the women in the States, y'all look foolish. Focus on the women out there. And the difference, there is no difference when a so-called black man does it. If he's trying to say, hey, I want to go out here and have a good time and I want to travel for some coochie and stuff like that, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Do you, right? But at the same time, it's not the same opposition you would get if you watch something like 90 Day Fiance or you see a multitude of so-called white men, usually, that decide to travel out the country and do what they're doing and, and talk about how the women over there are different than women in the States. Could it be a racial thing? Could be. Let's just watch controversy that we're dealing with one of its members austin holman is apologizing for comments that he made about brazilian women take a listen what i meant by when i said <clears throat> that brazilian women are easy and i shouldn't use the word easy i know that now i know that now i'm sorry 
But what I'm saying is, for a man that's well mannered, well dressed, that has put in the effort to to raise himself, he would have an easier time in Brazil as opposed to where I was from. That wasn't always the case. Both American and women around the world are speaking out against the passport bros, arguing these guys are using their status to take advantage of women and even calling it a form of sex tourism and sex trafficking. Let's talk about it. Communications specialist Priscilla Pack and Rochelle Gemini both are here on the Factor Uncensored. We were supposed to do this last week. We're doing it this week. Mm -hmm. You have done a lot of research. When you think about and what you've heard about passport bros your opinion on this so-called group let me tell you. now before she begins i find that the illest contradiction because obviously the men especially passport bros and you know other men groups like the manosphere have argued all the time that women take vacations more than the men do and then when they go out to these different countries they getting digged down by all these random dudes that they was already having on a sex uh, checklist i mean do we really have to reference a feminist that that basically illustrates this? I mean, remember the movie Girls Trip with, I believe, uh, Queen Latifah, Tiffany Haddish and a couple of other women that was in that film. And they was like, you know, they got to get out and go to these different vacations, which was sex vacations. Let's not play games here, because now that a, a so-called black man says what he says, even if I agree or disagree with it. The thing about it is, is that he's vilified for it, but the so-called black woman or women in general that takes these trips to these different places, they're wishing to get dicked down and they do get dicked down by these men in these different countries. So why is that not put on a table when it comes to this whole entire idea of sex tourism and to make it racially motivated, the fact of the matter that white men have always bragged about going out to different places and experiencing sex tourism? But, you know, the detractors is always going to come in when it comes to conversations like this. But passport bros, passport bros. Tell you, they weren't even on my radar. You brought it up to me and then I saw it and I was just like, oh, that's cute. You know, guys go and get their passports. My son just got his passport last week. He's nine. So that's cool. Passport brothers. That's what's up. Then I start doing the research and I'm like, wait a minute. Because I grew up, you know, with two-parent household. My parents still happily married. How I grew up in love. Some people grew up in survival mode, and maybe mm -hmm. they just in a whole nother dimension of trying to find love or trying to find easy situations and everything. But at the same time, it was like, why do you have to put down the thing that you don't like in front of everybody just to get the thing that you do want? I don't care. But that being that's complete bullshit. And, I, and I've seen the profile of this woman, Rochelle Gemini. Uh, she's supposed to be a poet, a rapper, and, an only, and then admits to the whole entire world that she's an OnlyFans content creator. So that already tells you, why should I even be listening to women like you when you, have you already sexually objectify yourself on the web in general? Now, I know it's the stereotype. Me, people may say, not everybody that has an OnlyFans does sexual content. But at the same time, I would say a majority of people that do have OnlyFans accounts is looking for the idea to make sexual content. Now, I, this may go off the record, go off the conversation, but when she mentions her parents, I mean, a lot of people do this tactic, and I've been seeing it online for a long time. They say, you know, my father and my mother has been happily married in a two-parent household, and everything is good. And I keep telling people the relationship dynamics of this age is different people are not falling in love like they used to people ain't getting married like they used to people don't care about love like they used to because relationships what it has always been but more it's it's more salient now it's more important to make this a topic of conversation that these relationships are transactional what do you offer me and more than likely a lot of these relationships are based off of lust they're not based off of growing in a foundation with each other in order to be in kind to each other so it's a different playing field than it was when you and your parents grew up not to say that there wasn't the same type of dynamic in some type of way, but obviously the morals were different than how it is today in 2023 and 2022. Black women in America putting yeah. them down for women who may be of color in another country. Right, that want to be a little more- also submissive exactly. to them. Exactly, exactly. But also paid prostitution 
in Facts. many cases. And that's what they're covering up. And Well, it's paid pros prostitution when you have an OnlyFans account, and a lot of you bitches is out here, uh, you know, putting up content on Instagram, showing yourself half naked. So, I mean, at the end of the day, what's the difference? If you have an Instagram account right now and an OnlyFans account and even, uh, you know, any other website out there, you know, that Patreon, for example, I mean, it's paid. It's not necessarily paid prostitution, but it's paid sex, isn't it? So blame the man that actually wants to be able to clean his pipes when it comes to another woman in another country. But you're out here creating content where you where you're basically showing your ass and you're showing yourself out there for the whole wide world to see that you're advertising yourself just like those women are in the other country, except those women are actually getting piped down by those dudes that you have a problem with because they're passport bros. Did you ever think about that? You can tell that, by the way, that what's his name, Austin? Mm -hmm. was talking because I saw the other videos of him going like, hey, you would have uh, <laughs> sexual intercourse with me tonight, right? And she's saying, yes. They about to really get a lick on him. That's what's really about to happen. Because I also saw, also saw some of the women from overseas saying, yeah, we're just trying to get a lick. You know, they also came out saying, we, we know these passport bros. They not new. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, anywhere you go. And this is not anything new. I, I mean, I would have to just rail back on that argument and saying, you know, anywhere you go as an American man and you are aloof to the culture, you are aloof to your surroundings, of course, you're going to get got, you know, and I know that women in those other countries will take advantage of the American man, especially with this whole entire scene of passport bros. But who's to sit up there and say that's not the same thing that happened to the so-called white men that was doing tourism for years and for decades, was going out to those different countries and flexing the idea that they are American men and they finally met submissive women in other countries. They got got to. And another detractor that they they probably will or will not say on this program is that you have those folks out there that will relate this whole entire thing of the passport bros trying to seek trans in those other countries like Brazil, Thailand, and the Philippines. But I mean, man has always traveled, right? Man has always went to those different countries. And especially I had thought about the wars that, that happened, like the Vietnam War and then wars from like the 50s and the, the 70s and 80s, where brothers or men in general that was in war, when they weren't on the battlefield and stuff like that, they went out to the villages and was dealing with those women. Of course they were. They were dealing with them, having sex with them, and then going back to do their proper duties as the one in infantry or the military. So what's the difference of what you're saying right now than what's been happening for decades and decades ago? Man has always traveled. Man has always had sex with women of different nationalities, different nations, different cultures, all those different things. It's not just in America now in 2023 and 2022, but the outrage is doing it for me. <laughs> the outrage. <laughs> so essentially, the the chumps themselves. Yes. They're simply John <laughs> on the streets of America. They might be they might be some that might be actually looking for love that can't find it maybe in America. But and you, you, and you right. didn't and you didn't let so. some it, you didn't let some rotten apples into y'all group and y'all need to call the ones out that's not doing it correctly. Because baby, we're not just in America. You can claim wherever you want to be anytime. I don't care. Get a passport. Go find your love. But at the same time, don't put down us just because you feel like you've had some rejection. Deal with rejection. Heal. Go do your thing. We don't care. And of course, we're not talking about all individuals who may travel out of the country. But Priscilla, for those who may be taking advantage of women out there and then trying to humiliate black women in America. Your thoughts about that? I think it's really, really sad. Mm. Like, I look at them and I almost want to pity them, but then I don't because there's a level of ignorance um, that's deplorable. <laughs> I'm going to use that word today. I think that um, they are taking advantage, at least for, from what they project themselves to be as a group, they're taking advantage of gender gaps and economic opportunities that are not there in these other countries that are present mm. for us in, in America, mm -hmm. in the States, in Canada, in Scandinavia, all over the world, and not even, not even thinking back to the history of why are women and people made to be so independent in this country today. I think there's so, so many factors that they shove to the side for their preferences and trying to deem it a movement, which is so disappointing to hear. The civil rights movement was a movement. Facts. <laughs> Facts. You know, anti-apartheid movement was a movement. Come on. So
I don't want to hear the snapping and the finger and all that nonsense. And and like I, like I've always believed, the civil rights movement, as much as it came to other movements that featured so-called black people as the prominent figures, still was giving credence and a lot of air time and giving more of an uplift to the so-called black woman before the so-called black man. Now, if you want to debate me on that, you're fine to do that, but this is where I stand on it. And the thing about it, it was important for the black man of that era to put the black woman in position instead of the black man understanding his role and moving forward when it came to those movements itself. Just like I discussed with one of my one of the brothers on this uh, YouTube thing when I had talked about um, when he had mentioned Black Panther Party. You know, I'm sorry to hear, for those that's going to hear this, but it is what it is. Black Panther Party was all about uplifting the black woman as well as trying to fight for equilibrium in the United States. Right. But a lot of times they wanted the black woman to be in control and kept up, kept uplifting the black woman like she was a queen. This is where they lost. And, you know, much as the things is that they started having infiltrators that were so-called black women, such as black men as well. But black women that was involved in it and they still uplifted the black woman as a queen when one of them was probably a CIA agent. <laughs> so, I mean, at the end of the day, when they have these conversations, it's like. Do you hear the rhetoric that a lot of these so-called black men feel when you have these conversations, right? When black men say, you know, we're not being treated fairly here in America, so we do want to go to other places where we feel loved and welcome. You don't care, but yet and still you vilify these men for doing what they're doing and saying what they're saying. It's not ignorance. They do recognize that they could build a business out in America, but then they also recognize the economic opportunity they have if they go to other countries in which a dollar is more valuable. You understand? So, I mean, there's a lot of ways of breaking this down, but, you know, I just disagree to a certain extents of what this woman is saying. And then especially what Black men have saying said for years. Every time the Black man has spoke about how he feels his life is in this country has been met with oppositions. You've been having a lot of news coverage, You've been having a lot of women, one woman in particular, that doesn't even want to see the future generation of black males exist in the next generation, right? Then you also have these stupid blogs that decide to put black men on front street, especially the beloved straight black man, as the problem and the, the predator of the so-called black community. You see how that works? So I'm thinking of passport bros like this is a shame. You could really take advantage of your opportunity to educate people on how to get a passport, wow. to go overseas, travel the world and to learn and Do not business. just make it be about sex. And the fact that now you're putting this stigma on people and black people in America, that that is literally mushing us down. I hate that I said mushing couldn't find a better word right there. <laughs> right. But they like bringing us down. Means. Right. They, they all know. They know. Um, but. What does that but do to hear for really our perspective? Quick, Jim, talk so some of them, some of them, not all of them, mm -hmm. talk so badly about black women in America, saying you guys are too bossy, you're too much, you're not feminine enough for them. I think. Well, my thing about it is, is that's a response to what happened the, all those years by syndicated television, and we already know this. That you know, still to this day, a lot of them don't understand. Well, the black man has been vilified. What was the famous lines that black men remember being said by black women from the 80s and 90s? Black men ain't shit. Quote unquote, niggas ain't shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, black men don't take care of their responsibility. Black men don't build nothing. And this, that, and the third, as if we were responsible for building these big cities by ourselves. And that... All, all of the things when a so-called black man had a peace of mind and when he wanted to say what he had to say, these random, just logical fallacies that came out of place, a lot of straw mans where then they say, well, black men like you don't even date black women, you date white women. And it's like, the problem is the black woman has failed on trying to understand a black man. And so the black man is tired of trying to explain himself to the black woman. So he said, yo, fuck it. I might as well just go to another country or go to another place where I feel welcome. You have failed in that department. So the black woman just doesn't care. So if the black woman doesn't care, the black man doesn't care. That's all the dynamics you're getting today in this field. And, why, and probably the reason why the solution that came to one black man said, hey, you know what? Passport bros. Brothers, get your passport. Let's go somewhere else. Now, I still critique certain things that passport bros say. But again, I tell y'all on this video, I don't have a problem with passport bros. 
And I believe brothers should travel around the world, get to know the culture, have a good time and do what they have to do. You understand what I'm saying? And I told dudes also start a business out there. Do what you got to do to generate that money across the world and internationally, not just in the States. And that's what I told people. I think that that sounds a lot to me like um, insecurities and the inability to seek what you want wow. with what you have, where you are. That's what I really think about that. It, it almost it almost disgusts me and is borderline gaslighting to sit here and treat American women, American black women, and, and try to shut us down because we may be educated or, or have the ability to obtain certain finances and social status that we're not in other countries. And you attract. It's a shame. What you put out there, too. It's a shame. All right. Like, don't put that on that. us. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all I have for this video. Um, you know, my thing is, uh, right, and maybe I'm being cynical, but when it comes to someone like Rochelle Gemini, why would I want to listen to a woman that has an OnlyFans account? Why would I think that your your opinions is valuable? You already sexified yourself, so I don't even want to hear anything you have to say. Well, otherwise than that, it's very raw. Well, give me what your thoughts is in the comment section. Before I leave, like, subscribe, share. Peace.